So we just wanna make sure you guys understand our intention behind the method to our madness. Brian, what's one of your biggest bugaboos when looking at retaining stones? Well, first, can you just say bugaboo one more time? Bugaboo. Bu I just got the call, they are finished. Oh, they're clapping. Let's check it out. Oh yeah. All right, so we got the pond virtually completely rocked. Now it's time to start working on that waterfall. So we've got one frame rock in. We're gonna work on setting our spill stone and then our next frame rock. We're gonna end up doing a little bit of a beach entrance over between this rock and what will be the frame rock, which I believe is that one right there. We're gonna go ahead and get the pump installed and go ahead and start rinsing these rocks down as the waterfall is getting built. And then once the waterfall is done, we're gonna wait, do all the edges along the pond as the pond is full. And then we will work on really setting those wing wall stones and working our way out. And then and getting it landscaped and beautiful so you guys can actually see what this would look like in somebody's actual backyard. So let's start building the waterfall and I'll go through all that stuff with you as we're doing it. all this stuff down in here, right? And then get the hose down in the gravel, rinse all this stuff off. But make sure you get the gravel really good. If you see little pieces of plastic, that kind of stuff, but rinse your way from the top down, right? Cause this gravel is so stupid dirty. It looks like Corey is getting ready to hook up the Biofalls faceplate to the Biofalls itself. He's done this a thousand times before, uh, but we're gonna go through and show you exactly how we do it. Before we get into the installation of this, I wanna show you the different things that you're going to need. Okay, so the two tools you're gonna need for this, one is a hole punch, the other is a Phillips screwdriver. So we've got those, and then we also have our insulation hardware, which is just our brass screws right here. They do have a flange on it. I'll show you that in a second. And then you're also gonna need a tube of silicone along with the faceplate that you saw Corey already has. So he's gonna go ahead and get going. What he's going to do is have the faceplate snout, which is this lip sticking out towards him. He will locate the two top corners with his hole punch or his awl, put two screws in, and then he's going to back those screws out after he cuts the liner. Okay, so he's gonna locate the first corner. What the hole punch is, is it helps you find the grommet. Then he's gonna go ahead and put one screw in loosely in that corner. All right, so he's got the first one in the corner. Now he's gonna come over and put the second hole in. Okay, so he's tightening them up. He's not gonna over tighten them because we are gonna pull these back out, but what he's gonna do is he's going to cut the liner on the inside of the portion of the faceplate. So he'll run his knife going down, across, and then back up. Super important that you don't want to make a separate cut going from vertical to horizontal. You wanna round or camfer those edges. So I'm gonna show you as he does it. It's also important to have a fresh blade on your knife when you're doing this. You don't wanna be sawing or hacking at the liner. You just wanna let the knife do the work. And then when he gets down just above that corner, he's gonna go ahead and start turning. There you go. Going straight over. Then he's gonna get over to that other corner and do the exact same thing, just in an opposite direction. Okay, now he's going to back those two screws out and we are going to reverse the snout on that faceplate. A couple reasons that it's nice to have those two screws in is now he has two guide holes for when he flips that faceplate around and reattaches the liner to the faceplate, eventually attaching it to the biofall. gonna continue narrating this. Here you go. Hey guys. So now Corey's gonna take their silicone and he's gonna place a bead, a quarter inch bead all the way around starting at the top screw hole and go all the way around covering all the screw holes. All 
right, so now that we have determined that on the Vial Falls 1000 is that you cannot flip the faceplate. Normally on the 6000 and 2500 Vial Falls, we're able to flip that lip around and you could have that foot facing inward, but on the 1000 series, you cannot do that. So the lip is gonna have to be facing outwards. So now Corey's just gonna go around and tighten all the screws going all the way around the faceplate and make sure they're all nice and tight. Let's go check on these guys. It is day two and they're just kind of doing some finishing touches, I think, or there should be, but I haven't seen it since yesterday. So let's go check out the progress, see where they're at and see, oh, 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 oh it's pretty cool. I actually love the waterfall. Yeah, no, it's it's really, really nice. You guys want to see? Huh? You want to see? <laughs> yeah. Now that's a nice looking pond. Two feet deep, easily two feet deep. They definitely maximize that liner and the waterfalls has got one, two, three drops coming in. They found some really nice rocks in here. Guys, how's it going? We are close. We are close. close. I was explaining to them the retaining walls and the importance of the wing walls and not to try and push those retaining stones close up to the biofalls. Bring them all the way out here. Yep. And we have all the extra soil to the right of the berm. We can move some of that over here. We really fill this out and this will be an excellent planting area and giving it that more natural sunken feeling like it's always been there. Yeah, too many times this berm goes like this and it looks like a volcano and so really these wing walls should come way out almost to the grass right. and then have soil in between for plants, 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 plants. When it does this, it looks ridiculous. Brian, what's one of your biggest bugaboos when looking at retaining stones? I know one of mine is the bottom of the rock being seen. What would you say one of the best pieces of advice you could give our viewers? Well, first, can you just say bugaboo one more time? Bugaboo. Bu bugaboo. <laughs> Every boulder, whether it's a retaining boulder, whether it's a rock inside the water feature and stuff, should look like it's sunken into the earth. Like the ground is eroded up towards it. So Corey here is kind of playing around with some stuff. He'll definitely want the bottom of that rock sitting below the grass line over here. And then you just try to match up joints as best as you can. Now with round granite, it's going to be difficult because it's round. So a lot of times it's not stacking boulders on top of each other. They're sitting recessed behind them. Kind of like this. So see the waterfall stone and then how that stone is recessed down behind it. It looks so much better than if that stone was sitting on top of that one. So no Notice almost every rock in this pond is done exactly the same way. Not one rock is standing on top of the other one. They're all recessed behind the next one, giving it a much more natural appearance. Mother Nature doesn't stack boulders on top of each other. They would never sit that way. Well, hey, let's let these guys finish up. It's looking really good. The next time we see this, it should be running. All right, so the guys are working on just kind of buttoning everything up, and Jack is in here foaming. In this comes a DIY foam can. This stuff cures very, very quickly and only have one can so you really want to make sure that you do all your foaming at once so what Jack has done in a bunch of these areas looks like you missed one over here Jack right there so you want to fill these gaps and voids back behind the rocks all the way in through here to get water to actually come over the top so let's go ahead and stuff that down in there show the viewers and you can see this stuff expands it'll stick to the rock the liner the gravel the fabric all that stuff so he just filled that area so you can see as he's filling that foam is expanding this stuff will dry a great color it's okay if it gets on the rocks. Just wait for it to dry, harden up, and then, see it's still tacky. You wanna let that thing dry, and then you can easily get that off the rocks. So you can see he's got this little void space back in here. We left this open as a little weep hole, and we're gonna go ahead and fill that with gravel and put an aquatic plant in there. But you can see behind and on the sides of all these rocks, and even underneath these rocks, I don't know if you guys can see that, underneath he has filled all this void space. So what'll happen is the foam that's down in here will just allow that water to weep out underneath these rocks, forcing this area to pool up and then spill over our spill stones coming down into here. Sweet! 
One final drain and rinse, get that water crystal, crystal clear. We're starting to plug in landscape plants surrounding it so we can give you guys a good idea of how it would look like with plants as well as why we do some of the wing walls the way that we do and we plug in some of the plants in the locations that we do. So we just wanna make sure you guys understand our intention behind the method to our madness. Put the camera down, we're gonna help button things up, get this pond full running so that we can do the edges and I really wanna show you doing the edges because that will save you a lot of time if you do it the right way the first time. So we're at that point now where the pond is full. We did fire up the waterfalls. One thing I wanted to show you real quick is we have our pond completely full now. So we're gonna finish up this section of edge over here. The pond is as full as it's gonna get. So you can see we have water level all the way down here. You wanna leave yourself about three inches of liner above water level when doing edges. So when you're setting your rocks along the edge, you wanna make sure that the back sides and the tops of the rocks are at least three inches above water level. That way, when you bring your liner back here, you get the top of the liner three to four inches above water level and leave yourself an extra three to four inches that you can fold back over onto itself. So what we're gonna do, Jack and I, it's always easier to work as a team when doing edges because one person will hold the liner where it needs to be and the other person will either backfill the soil or gravel, cobbles, whatever. It's always great to work as a team. So if you guys are doing this at home, this is a great spot to bring in some extra help. So Jack's gonna go ahead and fold this liner. We know exactly where water level is. So he's going to fold the liner back like this, or I'll hold it. We're gonna hold the liner back like this so it's above water level, backfill with soil, and then go ahead and we'll finish the rest of this with gravel. Go ahead, Jack. So notice I have my liner nice and folded, nice and neat, and then we've got the soil packed in nice and tight back behind it. We're gonna do the same thing over here. Make sure you get that sand and soil underneath the liner so it helps prop it up. And then we're gonna lay this down here in a second, but I'll show you what we're gonna do. So now we have our liner edge well above water level. Now Jack's gonna go ahead and just dump some gravel on top just to kind of change things up a little bit. So we'll pull this gravel out into here. You always wanna make sure that you're not mounding up the gravel like this because that gravel will never stay. You wanna have the top of the gravel about the same height as what you want the soil level to be. So we're gonna go ahead and just fill along the back side of that. That edge is completely done. One little trouble area is this area right here. We got a little gap right here where if we bring soil right up to the backside of that liner, soil's gonna wanna go ahead and migrate in there. That's not a good edge. So what we'll do is we'll either find a piece of gravel like this to kind of block that up, or what we can do is we can take our DIY foam, kind of fill that little gap right in there, let it dry, and then bring some soil back over the top. Just saw us do a little bit of edge work over here. One thing I wanted to show you is how to fold the liner. There's a couple different ways you can do it. There's a like what I call an accordion style, where you will bring the liner back and forth, back and forth onto itself like that, and not letting these corners of the folds dip down below water line. That can be a tricky spot. Or what you can do, pull this up high, so you can see where water level is at. One thing I like to do is I like to fold the liner like this, where I've got the edge of the liner up high, and then I'll sandwich it together, and I will fold it back like so. And then what we'll do, this is a different way to do it while achieving the same thing, but it gives you a nice clean edge. What you wanna pay attention to though, is not this part of the liner, but it's actually this fold right in here. You wanna make sure that this doesn't dip down into here and allow a leak, right? So you wanna make sure that this stuff stays up high. Go ahead and get it in. Pull this out right here. This is the best part about doing edges while the water's in it because you know exactly where water level is in the pond, right? So I need to get my liner up as high as the back of these rocks in through here. That'll give me that three inches that I was looking for. And then I'll bring this back in here. You can see the water squirting out. I've got a little bit of excess liner there. Not a big deal. It's always easier to trim it off than it is to put it back on. So now I've got a combination of the two. I've got both folds in through here. Now I'll come in with my soil, backfill, holding everything up nice and high, backfill, backfill, and that's how you do a nice clean edge. All right, so 
I just got the call. They are finished. I can actually even inside the warehouse here, the very distinct sounds of a babbling brook, which is music to my ears, which is probably music to anybody's ears because it's just that's why. <laughs> oh, they're clapping. I don't know if you guys know this, but Greg likes to clap a lot. So they must, they must be excited. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, that's awesome. You know what blows me away the most is that it doesn't matter if it's an artist of the year in here, our crew, the fact that this exists inside of a warehouse. It's just, it's, it's so crazy. That's awesome. I love the sound of the waterfall. I love that, what is that, 12 inches high? That bio falls is probably 12 inches higher than grade and we've got three really nice little waterfalls in there. So amazing. Some of the plants just look great. Anytime you add some plants around it, it just looks incredible. It's got great circulation. The one thing I will say with an eight by 11 foot kit, that's a small pond, but they use the same liner to go all the way up to the bio falls. So there's no way you could have put the waterfall back there without having another piece of liner. So they chose to do a small smaller pond and then use the same liner to come all the way up into the waterfalls. And it really looks incredible. Skimmer box is hidden nicely. The rock work is perfect. The wing walls look great. We talked a little bit about these retaining walls that come over onto the side. I might have followed the curve of the grass, but to each their own. Really good. Here's something like, so when, when you see the guys talking about it and pointing to it off in the distance, then you know they're proud about it too. <laughs> I'm really proud of these guys. They did a fantastic job. We had a lot of stuff that I think even we learned going through this process, it's like building a model, right? It's not as easy as, a, as a, you would think, but I think all of you guys out there can definitely pull this off. Hopefully the tricks and tips that we shared with you will help you guys be successful and build a functional pot. Jack, the whole point of this was to put yourself in a homeowner's mentality, you know, not having a tree dolly. You get a Corey and a Steven instead of a tree dolly. Yeah, no, Chris and I were talking <laughs> earlier about how we're always used to having everything at our disposal and not being constricted to what we, to just the kit. And so it was, it was just kind of a challenge of just being we can't have a tree dolly so it's just like every like we had to kind of stop and four guys had to pick up one rock and move with the underlayment just to move it over into yeah. a spot not having a laser transit yeah. using a six foot level not having like a you know a big pipe wrench and yeah. what do no, you I'm do i'm glad i invested all that stuff for you yeah. <laughs> steven now you've built ponds with some other companies what's the difference in building a pond now with aquascape seeing this is what you're you've been with us now a month ish uh yeah about a month and a half yeah, month and a half months. probably the biggest difference we definitely are a lot more efficient and this crew, this crew is a lot more efficient and you know, we get to do a little bit more uh, fun and more adventurous things like these challenges right here, you know. Sure. Able to There's not too many stuff. owners that build giant sandboxes for their crews. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. That's, that is the big difference right there as well. So. so are you excited to continue to do this all winter? Oh, because yeah. literally we will spend all winter practicing, practicing, practicing to the point where hopefully, Stephen, by the end of the year, you can build this thing by yourself. Oh yeah, that's, that's my biggest goal, just being able to absorb as much information as I can in the winter. So once we kick back in the spring and summer and start doing the big projects. And Steven, I'll tell you this. If you can build a pond like this size at the end of the year all by yourself, I'll buy you a razor. <laughs> Get a ponytail holder. Get a ponytail holder. <laughs> Corey, this is technically your last project with Aquascape. Last pond, yes. Pond. And it happens to be the smallest one as well. But it also came with its own challenges as well. Like once it's smaller, it actually soaks up a lot more space like the more rocks you put in it so we had a few more obstacles to go over and it turned out great it did it really turned out great Corey, we wish you the best with your future and yes. i know in, in arizona all because he met a girl on was it instagram or <laughs> was true. it snapchat <laughs> Tinder, Tinder. Not, not true not true <laughs> Corey. i have a feeling this isn't our last project together just your last project with probably with aquascape so i'm Here, sure yeah. yeah i'm guessing at some point we'll build a pond together out in arizona absolutely that's awesome what do you think? You liked it? Uh, I love it. You know, I'm still learning every single day with you guys. Yeah, that's a very awesome. awesome project. And I never seen something like that on the package doing in a few hours. Well, we you know. appreciate all your hard work, and you guys are obviously very, very talented at what you do. You guys tell me what's your favorite part. Hopefully, like Chris said, you guys learned something, and they shared with you some uh, tips and tricks, points of wisdom, and made it more importantly something obtainable. Hopefully, you guys were inspired that you could do this yourself with about two tons of boulders. Two tons sounds like a lot, but it's like 60 rocks, 50 rocks. So if you can picture moving 50, 60 rocks in a wheelbarrow with a couple buddies, you too can have this.
tell them what to do. If you don't know already, make sure you give us a thumbs up on this video because you know you loved it. And if you haven't, hit the notification bell so you can subscribe and stay up to date on all the Team Aquascape content every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you later. Woo! <laughs>